Yes. Okay, so we're going to talk about, um, all right, we're going to talk about uh, distance traveled today. And we're going to use uh, sums, taking sums, the process of taking sums to find quantities such as distance traveled. All right, so we know that if you have distance, you take a derivative and you get velocity. But what if you have velocity? Can you go backwards and find distance? Well, it turns out you can. All right. So take a look at this example here. Um, a train moves along a track at a steady rate at 75 miles an hour from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay. What is the total distance traveled by the train? So, and yeah, at this point, this is something that we could all do mentally. But let's let's really take a look at this. Um, this train is moving at a steady rate of 75 miles an hour, okay? And this is all happening from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., right? And we want to find the distance. So we know that we could use this formula, distance equals rate times time, right? Um, and so, okay, distance is the rate, 75 miles an hour times, okay, by the way, in calculations, never MPH, right? It's miles per hour, miles over hour like this. Um, times the time, this took two hours. So if hours cancel, then I have 150 miles. Does that make sense? All right, it traveled 150 miles. Of course, because 75 miles per hour, two hours, it's 150 miles. Now, let's see if we could have done the same thing using a graphical approach, all right? Okay, so take a look at this graph here. Look at these axes. Here I have time, okay, fine, but take a look at what I have here. This is velocity, all right? So this is a velocity versus time graph. And those of you that are in physics right now, you know that that makes all the difference, whether it's velocity versus time or time or distance versus time. So now this is velocity versus time. This train is moving at a steady rate of 75 miles per hour. So imagine this is 75 miles an hour, okay? Um, and if I were to graph the velocity, it looks like this. It's a, it's a constant, so it's a horizontal line, and that is the equation y equals 75, correct? Okay. Now, when is this happening? So this is the time. So suppose here it was 7 a.m. and here it was 9 a.m. So this problem is taking place between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. So basically this is the chunk of the graph that applies to this problem. Okay? Now, what is this? Um, how can I use this to find distance? It's the area under the curve, right? What shape is this underneath the shaded region? This is a rectangle. So now look at this. This is a length of two hours. Okay? So that's time. This is 75 miles an hour. So the base is two hours, and that has, uh, the quantity is time. The units are hours. The height of this rectangle is 75 miles per hour, which is the rate. So now, just using dimensional analysis, what should I do to these two quantities the base and the height in order to get a dimension of distance. Multiply them, right? And when I multiply the base and the height, I'm essentially finding area of this rectangle. So if I were to find area of rectangle, right, it's 75 miles an hour times 2 hours, 150 miles. All right, so what did we realize then? That if you have a velocity versus time graph, 
the area under the curve gives you distance. And if you didn't know that, and if you couldn't wrap your head around it, the most you could do, I mean, the least you could do is, okay, this make, gives you a rectangle. The base of the rectangle is miles per hour. The height is hours. If you multiply them, you get area, and it gives you miles. Oh, my God. The area must be equal to the distance. Okay, we call this dimensional analysis, using the dimensions, the units, to find the formula, essentially. Okay? All right. So, to recap, the distance traveled by the train is exactly the area of the rectangle whose base is the time interval and the height is the value of the constant. All right? Okay. And we've done this before. Like, we know that the distance from here to here is the equation. We were doing this with their optimization problems. Okay. Now, what if, okay, the train had a varied velocity? All right? What if the velocity varies as a function of time? Then the graph would no longer be a rectangle, right? If the velocity was not constant, then you would not get a rectangle. So, for example, again, velocity versus time. If my velocity looks like this, right? And, again, if I'm going from, let's say, 7 to 9, and if I look at the shaded region underneath, okay, that is not a rectangle. That is some irregular shape, okay? Now, here's a question for you. Would the area of this irregular region still give the distance traveled? Yeah, no. Would it? Yeah, because the, the base is still time. The height is still velocity. So if you want to find the area, you're still multiplying those two, which gives you um, the distance. So. Luckily, Newton and Leibniz, another mathematician, the two of these um, found, they, they invented calculus independently of one another. Um, so they imagined the time interval here partitioned not into one big chunk, but into many, 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 many tiny little chunks. So what do we mean by that? Newton and Leibniz said, okay, so I have here the region that I'm looking at, okay? If I look at it as one big region, that's it's ridiculous. It's an irregular shape, and I don't know, I can't do anything with that. But if here I was able to use a rectangle to find the area, then you know what? Maybe what I could do here is divide this region, partition this into tiny little chunks. So that now, each one of them gives me a tiny little rectangle. Okay? So, like this. You were. That's awesome. That's awesome. So now... So now, if I look at this, and if I take any random rectangle, you know what? I'm going to take this rectangle right here, this one. And if these partitions are small enough, right, look at this one. Yeah, maybe the top is a little bit of a diagonal, but you know what? It's pretty darn close to a good rectangle up there, right? So now, if I, were, if I were to find the area of this tiny little rectangle, how many of those rectangles are there? Many. If I were to find the area of every single rectangle separately and add them to each other, would that give me a very good approximation of the area of the entire shape? Yes. So, how do you get your area to be more and more and more precise? Draw smaller, 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 smaller rectangles. So right now, I might have 15 rectangles underneath. That's not nearly enough, right? So what I did is, for the, the interval from 7 to 9, you can divide it into 15 partitions. 
or you could divide it into 30 partitions, or you know what? You could really divide it into a million partitions, okay? You could divide it into a trillion partitions, find the area of a trillion rectangles, add them up, and boom, you've got your area under the curve, okay? You've got your distance. So the total, so their argument is that the total distance traveled is found by taking the sum of all of the areas of the rectangular strips. I mean, seriously, if you think about it, like the, every year, every time I look at this, like I, I never take this for granted because this is, this is a huge deal, right? To be able to do this and now to come up with a mechanism that does this, you know, using calculus in one felt swoop, seriously, it's amazing. So what this is called is the rectangular approximation method. All right, because it's never going to be, you know, it's an approximation, but it's a pretty darn good approximation. So as we just figured out, the width of each rectangle is determined by the length of each subinterval. So for example, the region from 7 to 9, if I divide it into four subintervals, how big is each, is each base here? If I divide 7 to 9 into two into four regions, how big is each of the rectangles? It's a half, right? So 7 to 9, I divide it into four. Each one is half, half, half. Now if I divide it into eight regions, how many? It's a quarter. So the width is the length of the subinterval. The height is the function's value at each end point. So if I'm at this blue rectangle here, how high is this? What's the height there? Well, that's the y value, right? That height is the y value, the y value at that x value, okay? All right, so now, now, when you draw your rectangles, take a look here for a minute. When you draw your partitions like this, okay, so if you just look at the x-axis, you could draw your partitions. Now, how do you draw rectangles? How do you make those into rectangles? So if I have my curve here, and okay, so I partitioned it, right, like this. How am I going to make those into rectangles? I could either use, I could either go from left to right, okay? Or how else can I make? I could go right to left. So I could go from here to here, here to here, here to here. Do you see that? So whether you go from the left or from the right, okay, we call it a different thing. So LRAM is left hand endpoint. So this is the left rectangular approximation method, LRAM. RM, you're using the right endpoints, or you could be like, you know what, I'm just an average values type of guy. And so when you take for each of your rectangles, like this is one rectangle, don't go left or right because you can't make the decision. Go to the midpoint and draw the height over there. Okay, and that's called, um, it's the midpoint, so it's MRAM, all right, where we're going to use the midpoint of each interval to determine the height. Yes? When you use right hand endpoint, do you subtract the uh, yeah. area of the... Look at what we're going to do now, yeah. Take a look, okay, I'm actually going to erase these because I'm going to use those to, I'm going to use that area to solve this. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to estimate the area under this curve, f of x equals x squared, that's this parabola, from 0 to 3 with 6 subintervals. And we're going to do it using LRAM, RRAM, and MRAM. Okay? Now, you're always going to be given a function. You're always going to be given an interval. You're always going to be given the number of subintervals. And then it's up to you to partition it, right? It's up to you to partition it. So from 0 to 3, I'm going to divide it into 6 regions, right? So basically, how big is each region? How are you going to find how big the region is? 
This has a length of 3 divided by 6. Each one is going to be 0 0.5. Okay? You see? Yeah. Okay. So, so, what, so this is going to be the base. So if you write it more formally, more formally, the base is going to be 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 half. I want to use um, fractions. All right? So now, let's take a look at this for a minute. L ram. Okay, look at, look at how this graph looks. It's increasing and it's concave up. So in this situation, if you do L ram, is the area that you're finding greater or less than the actual area? Less it's less than because you're leaving some point, some parts out. Well, what about this one? Greater than. Now you're going to be over approximating. Okay. So just know that, and that changes. It's not always L ram will be less, M ram will be more because depending on how whether it's concave up, concave down, increasing, decreasing, it'll change. Okay. So now, essentially, here's what we're going to do. How many rectangles are underneath here? Six. six. So we're going to have to find the area of six rectangles and add them to each other. All right? Add them with each other. So if it's L ram for each rectangle, we have to multiply base times height. So here's how it's going to look. Um, For the first rectangle, so look, I have here one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth rectangle is right there, okay? So this is LRAM. So area is going to be base times height, right? Base is a half times. What's the height of this itty bitty rectangle based on the left end point? The left end point, x equals 0, y is 0 squared, so it's 0. Plus, okay, now take a look at this one. What's the height here? Okay, um, what's the x value there? Is it 1 here? It's a half, right? Each one of them has a length of a half. So let's just do this for a minute. If this is x equals 0, this is x equals a half. What about here? 1, 3 over 2, 2, 5 over 2, and 3. Okay? So, in this red rectangle, how big is the height on the left-hand side? It's x squared. So, 1 half squared. So, this is going to be the base times the height, 1 half times 1 half squared. Plus, now let's do this one in black. Right, one half times the left end point squared. Why am I squaring these numbers? Because because the function x squared. Okay, so then the next one, let's do it in green. It's going to be plus one half, three over two squared. Let's go to purple again. One half. 2 squared, and then here, 1 half, 5 over 2 squared. Well, we don't do three. Correct. You don't do 3 because you're only taking the left ones. So you plug this in, and LRAM is going to be 6.875. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now let's do R RAM. Okay, R RAM. Again, I have the same number of rectangles. So here is my first rectangle. This time I'm going to take the right end point. So again, this is 0, half, 1, 3 over 2, 2, 5 over 2. Now I'm going to take the right end points. So base is a half times a half squared plus the next one, one half, one squared, am I going too fast? Plus one half, three over two squared. 
once you start you know the rest you just go like down the road boom 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 but you know you, you have to know where to stop huh plus one half two squared I'll tell you this one we started at zero this one we started at a half but we're gonna end yeah one less so and then um what happened here plus one half I'm gonna ab abandon my colors five over two squared the last one is going to be one half three squared right huh because since this is the right side for this rectangle i take the half the one three over two two five over two and then three so the difference between the top and bottom is started at zero went to five over two started at half went to three yeah is there a way to find the area of the space? Not, it's not necessarily a rectangle. Oh, this? Uh, I mean, a triangle. This? Like, yeah, is there a so way it's to... not a triangle either. It's a curve. I understand. It's a curve. But is there a way to find the area of that? You could do it like the inverse of this, but it's this is far. This is to get a more exact way to get one to track that. This um, no, because eventually. Okay, so no matter what you do here. It's not going to be exact because you have far too little rectangles. What we are going to do to make it more precise is just go from six rectangles to an infinite number of rectangles, and then we hit it right on the nose. Okay? So our RAM is going to be 11.375. Look at what a over approximation that is. Or are you going to take the average of this? Well, no. Now we're going to do MRAM, which is the midpoint. So let's think about the midpoint for a minute. If this rectangle goes from zero to a half, then what's the midpoint? A quarter. And then this is three fourths. This one here, the midpoint is five fourths. Seven four. Nine over four. And then this one is 11 over 4. Whoops, I did pi over 4. <laughs> it's 11 over 4. And then the next one would have been 12 over 4, which is 3, so we're good. So now, MRAM, listen, let me do this and then I'll take a question. MRAM, again, it's going to be base times height. The base is still a half, but the height is going to be the midpoint value squared. All right, so it's going to be 1 over 4 squared plus a half, 1 over, oh no, uh, 3 over 4 squared, half, 5 over 4 squared, 7 over 4 squared, 9 over 4 squared, with the halves of course, and then half 11 over 4 squared. Now, no matter what, you have to have the same number of rectangles here as your subintervals. So just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to make sure you have all of them. Even me at this point in my life, you know, sometimes I'm just, you know, going so quick I miss one. I always go back and count to make sure that I have the same number. So MRAM is 8.5. 938. Okay, question. To appreciate what we've done here, notice for each one of them, you've got this repeating factor of a half because this is the base. Is that right? So now look, if your subintervals are equal lengths, if you have six equal subintervals, are the bases going to be the same for every single rectangle? Yeah. Yes. That means eventually we could do this more efficiently and just factor out a half right and so just do one half times all of these other ones all right
instead of repeating one half, one half, one half, one half, one half, I could just write one half once and then just add up the heights. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at this one. Refer, okay, so some calculus language here. Refer to the region R. This is, this is standard notation, all right? Region R enclosed between the graph of the function. Oh, I should only say that once. Between the graph of the function y equals 1 half x squared and the x-axis for 0 to 4. Okay, so I have a region R. It's between a couple of things. It's between two things in this case. A, half x squared, and B, the x-axis. So can I graph half x squared here and can I graph it precisely at 0? All right, so let's do this x and y is half x squared. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? At 0, y is 0. At 1, it's a half. At 2, it's 2. At 3, it's half of 9, 4.5. At four, huh? At four, it's eight. So at one, it's a half. So basically, and then at four, this is an eight. At two, it's two. At 3, it's 4.5. All right. Now, so this is half x squared. So where is this region? It's the region between half x squared and the x-axis. Okay. Okay. So. The region then is this, okay? So this is the region R. This is notation that you just have to get used to because it's going to show up in chapter five and then six and then seven. So the region R between, enclosed between a function and the x-axis and then sometimes it'll get a little bit more complex, okay? Now, okay, so it says sketch the region R, which we did. Partition R into four subintervals of equal length and approximate the area using LRAM. So, interval 0 to 4, four subintervals. Okay, that's easy. Each one is going to have a length of 1. Okay, so here I have 1, 2, 3, 4 subintervals. And now I have to do this using LRAM. The left hand, I'm sorry, the left hand um, values, okay? So let's do this. Um, so we know that the base is an interval of 4 divided by 4, which is 1, okay? All right. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. So for LRAM, how much is the base for each of the rectangles? One. So like I said, instead of doing one times this, one times this, one times that, I'm going to do one out here times, okay, each of the y values now. So this is the base, and then I'm going to do first height, second height, third height. Okay. For the first rectangle, the left end point is the value at zero. And look, I've already found all my y values, so I could just go on my chart up there. So that's going to be um, 0 plus, okay? Now, for rectangle number 2, right, it's going to be the left end point. I'll just write it for this one. What was the equation here? Half x squared. 
if you don't have that table set up, it would have to be half times 1 squared. All right? This is f of 1 plus half. Okay, so for the other rectangle, it'll be 2 squared plus half of 3 squared, right? So this is the left-hand approximation. Turns out this is equal to 7. Yeah. Right. All right, so make sure you here you have 1, 2, 3, 4 values. Okay, now we're going to do it for our RAM. Our RAM, same deal, 1, that's the base, plus, now we're going to do the left-hand values. So it's going to be half times 1 squared, half times 2 squared, half times 3 squared, half times 4 squared. And that is 15. So these, I just did it just again to reinforce where they're coming from. You could have totally gotten them off this chart once you did it one time. Okay, MRAM, we do have to do this from scratch. Again, base did not change. It's still 1 times. Now I need to do the midpoint. So half of, what's the midpoint of the first rectangle? Half squared, half, three halves squared, five over two squared, and seven over two squared. Right? Because they're at point five, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. Um, turns out this gives you 10.5. Okay. Does it make sense that your MRAM is always a value in between the LRAM and the RAM? Of course it does, right? Yeah. You could be given a function for your velocity, right? Or what if you don't have a function for your velocity? What you have instead are is a carefully constructed timetable, okay? So look at this one. Somebody sat there and they recorded the velocity every second from 0 to 10 seconds of this model train engine, okay? So this is a table, velocity of a model train engine moving along a track for 10 seconds. Estimate the distance traveled by the engine using 10 subintervals of length 1 with LRAM and RRAM. So you will be given enough information to calculate your base and your height. Okay? So now, let's take a look at this for a minute. Um, it says you have a subinterval with a length of 1, so you know that B is equal to 1. Now let's analyze this table for a minute. You've got values for time. Okay? These, are, these would have gone on the horizontal axis, right? This is your independent variable. And then your velocity is the dependent variable. Okay, <clears throat> we want subintervals of 1. Let's take a look here on your x-axis at how this is calibrated. Luckily, look, it goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Oh my gosh, it's like going up by 1. So look at that. And how many of these subintervals are there? 10. So we've got exactly the information that we need in the form that we need it. Okay? So if I go, all right, so if this is 0 and then 1, 2, 3, and so on, okay? If I want, okay, so at 1, it's 12. So that's how that looks, okay? If I want LRAM, I want to start with this one. Is that true? Mm -hmm. If I want RRAM, I want to start with this one. Okay, so RRAM, I start here. And then LRAM, I'm going to start here.
So that's what you just have to be careful of. Okay, so now let's do LRAM. The base is always 1 times. I have to take the y values, which is the velocity, and I just said that for LRM I'm starting here. Where do I end? At the 6 or the 0? The 6. Okay, so I'm going to, and I'm just going to copy it down. So 0 plus 12 plus 22 and 10 and 5 and 13, 11, 6, 2, 6. So this is what I mean. Sometimes we just get carried away and just count. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Woohoo. Okay. So this is LRAM 87. Okay. Somebody give me units. Inches. I want distance traveled inches. RAM base is still one this time i'm going to take the other values so it's going to be 12 and 22 and 10 and 5 and 13 11 6 2 6 oh plus zero uh it is the same yeah 87 inches, yeah, because we lost a zero, but we gained a zero, so it's the same. All right, so it started from rest, and then it just slows down to rest here, okay? So, come on, like, how much do you guys love physics, though? Seriously, like, this, is the best. this it's... It's my inspiration. It, it was my inspiration, that's for sure. Okay, oh, I'm going to...